Hello, everybody. This is Christina Fasonic broadcasting live from a very rainy Wheeling, West Virginia tonight. I can't complain too much about the rain because I have, as you all know, um, tomato plants that are dying because of neglect. So I'm very happy that it's raining. I'm going to bring on my co-host now, Damian Dresnick. Hello, Damian. Good evening, Christina. How are you tonight in Wheeling, West Virginia? A little soggy. Hmm. Is it raining in Prospect? It is not. It, it is threatening. Uh, well, threatening, cracking the knuckles, right? So, so we have another um, uh, writer on tonight, and would you like to introduce her? Very much so. I am super excited to bring on tonight's reader. Uh, I got to know Nancy Krigowski when she was or, um, curating, along with our uh, with Sherry Flick, who also read on um, Wakona Live, the Gist Street Reading Series, which in Pittsburgh is legendary. Uh, it was they brought in amazing writers. Went on for I believe ten years at James Simon Sculpture Studio. They were they were one of the first people to make uh, Pittsburgh Litzburg. We I think everybody who writes in this town owes them a debt. Uh, and Nancy is the author of The Woman in the Corner from the University of Pittsburgh Press. It was named one of the top one hundred or so, uh, Books of Poetry for 2020 by Library Journal, and her first book, Velocity, won the Agnes Lynch Start Prize from the University of Pittsburgh Press. Nancy teaches English to refugees and immigrants, in addition to leading poetry workshops at Carlo's Mad Women in the Attic writing program. Wow, all right. Hello, Nancy. Hi there. Hi, Christina. Hi, Damien. Thanks for that, Damien. That was very sweet. Nice Thank to see you back. Thank you so much for being on tonight. We cannot wait to hear what you have for us. So we're going to pop off and then we'll pop back on whenever you're finished. So, okay. I'm just going to read straight through then, right? Is that the plan? Yeah, the read straight through. And then when you are finished, we will pop back on and talk with you for a few minutes. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Can't wait. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to I'm just going to read three poems. I love the idea of a mini reading. Um, and the first poem I'm going to read um, actually is uh, a poem that's sort of about being uh, a proud um, granddaughter of immigrants. Um, but it's also about like sort of finding your identity when you are um, part of an immigrant background. So and the, the vehicle for this is a hat. It's a fedora. So this poem is called The Salvation Army Wasn't Meant for You. Um, but I want to say that you need to hear that like in a mom's voice. The Salvation Army wasn't meant for you. OK, so I, I got to take off my glasses to read. The Salvation Army wasn't meant for you. The fedora smelled of the damp basement shop, of men who bunked upstairs, listened to talks of temperance, then pushed fumigated couches into penitent rows. My poor mother, poor woman who'd been saved by the suburbs, then exiled to powder room envy, practically burped embarrassment. Where did you get that? Gray of house dust, gray of calloused skin. I'd slipped on some small gray man's head, stuck the hat with a pigeon feather. We were trying to raise, rise above a poor immigrant past, and there I was, feathered obstacle to blending in. I'd plucked the hat from babushkas, what my mother put on, the meek shall inherit the earth, and neckties what my father shed to pick apples from an ex-orchard's stunted trees. He'd call off half a day, roll up his sleeves, churn away skins, while my mother boiled jars to almost breaking. We'd mash the fruit into sauce, line winter shelves, then eat to bargain the cabbage from our breaths. The apples opened their voluptuous smell while I wished for manwich, hungry jack, that free American feel in my mouth. What had seemed like salvation was my land of not enough. I tamped this inheritance under that brim, 
spilled abundant hair, framed my apple cheeks like a parade queen. That too big hat forced my chin up. Who needs dreams when you have attitude? Did I want attention? Yes. Hey, Annie Hall. Hey, boy, George. I belted voluminous pinstriped trousers around a defiant waist, wore silk slips as dresses, tricycle red pedal pushers, and always the hat. Who do you think you are? A long haired man in a dress? Yes. Vintage 1960, fabric girly scripted with names of herbs. Tarragon, savory, sage. I would taste them all. So, yeah, so um, I'm a big believer in uh, clothing as identity, but um, not something that made my mom too happy. Uh, bless her. Uh, the next poem I'm going to read, we were, we were before you all got on, we were talking about Appalachia and Rust Belt. And um, the next poem I'm going to read from my new book, The Woman in the Corner, um, is actually a, a poem that was in Rattle's, uh, it's a great literary journal, Rattle. Um, they did a Rust Belt edition, and this poem was in that edition. So this is called Weed Whacker. Weed whackers do solve a problem. Just like smacking a two-year-old's face makes him startle quiet for a second. Smacking is a good thing to hate, but if you're honest, you understand the desire. Then remember, right is right. On the bus, I watched a young mother playing give me five with her little boy, a smacking game. Later, he wanted something he couldn't have and smacked his mom's breast. What happened next? A weed's roots weave close to the surface, so when you pull them up, it's like roads lifting off a map, and suddenly we go back centuries to when this country was new. People tramped prairie grass and navigated with the sun. And the roots of weeds can dig down deep, so deep, you spend hours on the ground, arm in the earth, loosening and pulling. This small, deep killing feels good. It feels right. I read about a six-year-old wandering the highway while her mom was at work. She wanted Twinkies, Twinkies from the store. There wasn't a store for miles, and there's so much shit in them, they're barely food. But she wanted spongy sweetness, wanted a glass of milk, wanted a mom who has a way not to leave her at home alone while she works. Whack rhymes with smack, and in some ways, right rhymes with wrong. Forgive us, we say to our hands. And one more poem in my mini reading. Uh, if I can find it. So this poem is called One Year After. Yesterday, strangely, hardly moving along the street, but moving nevertheless, drifting slowly and low against paper cup, index card, flyer for tax help. A pigeon's single wing lifted and swayed close to the feet I'd swung out of the car into this day of work. I told myself each day is like a new life. What could I do but believe? It was the dead of spring and the dead were greeting me in this one wing, not flying, but swaying, playing with wind's chances, saying, do something because I can't. Could the bird be alive 
misting through days, worrying about getting eaten? And does everyone dream of loving the man who's missing a leg? So love means desire for shared patience, a piece of pain. Briefly, the single wing, failed boomerang, mother's hand waved against my winter boot. Good morning. I said, thanks for listening to those three poems. Woman in the corner, woman in the corner. <laughs> oh, those were absolutely exquisite. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we are super excited to get the woman out of the corner and onto Wakona Live. <laughs> that is some of your strong. I, I love Velocity. I thought it was a wonderful book. I I, I know you uh, you came out to the Legionnaire uh, the Writers Conference out there, and I, I so I, I read that, and I think that is just some of your strongest work yet. It's wonderful stuff. My <laughs> poor mother saved by the suburbs. And I love the idea of right rhyming with wrong. You know, I'm obsessed with right and wrong. Like I am like a, I just have like these, no, it's right, it's wrong. And I know it's not really true, but. <laughs> well, and the idea of, of, of like, so you can play this slapping game with your child and this is okay. This like high five is okay, but this isn't. Yeah. Like in what, you know, what is the, yeah, it's a very, very, Good. I just really enjoyed it so much. Oh, thanks. And thanks. I will say before we go, I, I think I'm correct at saying this, but um, I believe we have a colleague in common. Have you worked with Bob Stapley before at the Heinz History Center? I'm, Do you no. know him? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Oh, because uh, the reason why I asked that is because he does a lot of work with immigrant stuff. Oh. And uh, maybe you guys work together. Before. No, but maybe I should. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's fantastic and he does all kinds of stuff, especially with the history oh. of immigration in the Pittsburgh region and in Youngstown too. He's done a lot of Oh, that. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. that history is really, really rich. Yeah. And we still, I mean, we're developing a new rich history here with all the immigrants and refugees who have been uh, settled in Pittsburgh. And how those waves have changed. And even with Appalachia, I mean, the Southern and Central Appalachians have migrated to Pittsburgh, migrated to Youngstown, migrated to Detroit, migrated to all these other places in different waves of migration. So it's interesting to see how they've shaped culture and how they've been shaped by that culture. So yeah. yes, very cool stuff. Uh, Thank you so much. Your poems were absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for doing it. Great reader. I, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely, I want to have students look at the way you read as a tutorial it was just wonderful like the cadence yes. and the yeah just beautiful thank you i don't want to be boring <laughs> oh, that's wonderful that's my, so actually that's my one rule in writing class because i make everybody try and guess it the first the first day of the semester what's don't be boring it's my one rule i think it's really important yeah well it is you know if it's boring you while you're writing it or reading it maybe you need to think about that <laughs> <laughs> you know Thank you again for being on. And who do we have next week, Damien? Do you, do you recall? It is on my upstairs computer. I, I know we've got Mike Dittman coming up really soon. Yes, he's coming up soon. And we have actually a lot of good people coming up. But is it August, the month that we're going just to Thursday? Yeah. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. I, it almost slipped my mind. Yes, we are. We are going to be taking a break from our Monday readings during the month of August because uh, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> and because we said so. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much again for being on. And we hope to see you live, live at some point thank after you. whenever this is over, whatever this is, it's over. Thank you. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, um, everybody in the audience, for tuning in again tonight. And I'm put my book here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> where, where, I love the cover. The woman in the corner, Nancy. Where can we find it? We find Everywhere. It? I mean, it's uh, University of Pittsburgh Press is great with distribution. I say support your local bookstore if you can. Yeah. So if they, if they would, were, we had Arlen Hess on, if they went to City Books or if they went to the White Whale. Definitely white whale. I hope Arlen has it. I don't know, but yeah. Okay, super right. cool. Great. Have a super great evening, everybody. We'll see Thank you, you so much. Bye. See you next Bye. time.